What's up guys, Showtime checking in. Uh, here we are, Resident Evil 2 Remake review. I am very experienced with the game. I have played it quite a lot. So I feel like I'm ready to talk about it. First, right off the bat, um, I do have to say, Resident Evil 2 Remake is really good. Uh, I really thoroughly enjoy the game. I gotta say there was a lot of actual points in the game that were super scary, uh, especially with Mr. X. Uh, every t when I first saw him, I'm like, oh shit, and, and you know how they have that music? Jesus Christ. Uh, it makes you, it has that sound where it makes you feel like your, your stomach sinks, or your heart stinks in your stomach, and you just get this like really scared feeling uh, when you see him. It's a huge improvement from the original game. They got rid of the pre-rendered backgrounds, like the fixed camera angles, in place of more Resident Evil 4, which I'm actually okay with. Originally, I wanted to have the game be uh, like Resident Evil 1 Remake, where it was all fixed camera angles, pre-rendered backgrounds. With in mind that it plays like Resident Evil 4, I was able to tolerate it, and I was like, okay, this is cool. All the environments uh, are super, like, very scary, very well detailed. Um, the lighting are very good. You can tell the uh, the artists and the people that put together the environments cut no corners and they tried to immerse you into it as much as possible. All the enemies look really great, look true to form the way that they they, they uh, that they should, especially the liquors. The liquors look great in this game. One difference that I saw with uh, the graphics, I guess, in terms of like enemy design was uh, the plant guys. Uh, the Groot dudes uh, near the end. Uh, They're actually plant zombies and not just plant monsters this time, which I actually think is pretty cool. Uh, especially with the way that they kill you. There's spikes in their head, like their teeth, they just grow, go over your, your uh, head. The, the zombie design in this game is superb. They did a great job with it. Uh, the zombies, like, actually like really make you feel scared the way that they grab you you never quite know when the zombies are actually dead in the original ones right they had where the zombies would fall to the ground and and they you you wouldn't know that they were dead until you saw a pool of red blood come out from underneath them and this one even if you like put in a whole lot of bullets into them or whatever have you they could actually still come up later i experienced that a lot uh, in my first playthrough uh, killing the zombie or thinking I killed the zombie going into another room and then as I come back the same guy is still there and I know it's the same guy because I remember like he's, he's just all full of blood so in my opinion uh, I, you know I give this I give the zombies like, I say thumb like two thumbs way up for, uh, for the zombies in this game I'm not gonna lie, at first I thought the liquors were a little lame. When I found out that you could just walk past them, I was kind of like, that's when I started to feel like they were lame. But at the same time, you get put in a lots of different situations uh, in the game, where, especially like when Mr. Rex is following you around with a liquor in the room. So that actually was just like, oh shit, well what do I do now? So I thought that added to, uh, to the strategy as well. And I, saw, and I also appreciated too is, is the fact that they can't see you, but they can smell you and hear you. So even if like you are walking quietly and they kind of follow you around, it's because they smell you. The liquor design is spot on. It's it's so good. Um, it looks just like the original. I, I really like it. And they shoot their tongue at you too. Not really too much to say about the dogs, other than the fact that yeah, they're just like you would expect from the original game. Uh, however, it's just put in like a Resident Evil 4 style environment. They behave how you'd expect them to be, except they're little cheap bitches sometimes. Another uh, enemy in the game that's Got a lot of people um, really like freaked out about them. Um, a lot of mixed feelings, like pissed off, like I hate these, are the G adults. It was originally a boss fight, the first boss fight in the, the A campaign for the original uh, Resident Evil 2. They actually made them a regular enemy in this game, which I thought was super awesome, of course. I, as I went through the area that they're in, they're obviously in the sewers, but there's that one area you gotta go to where the, the Queen and King plugs are, where the either the flamethrower or the spark shot is. You gotta traverse through that area, and everybody who's played the game fucking hates that section. 
I still hate it even though I have figured out ways to deal with it. Those guys are the only guys in the game that I can think of off the top of my head, the regular game, that can actually poison you. Getting poisoned is just terrible. It slows you down and you cough sometimes. It's like you get stunned, like you can't shoot your gun or anything. So they could put this, this state on you. Those guys suck, but I'm okay with them being in the game because it adds something new to it and it's kind of cool to see them uh, as being like a regular enemy instead of just a regular instead of a boss fight. They did take out the crows and they did take out the spiders. I think I see I think I know why they took out the spiders. They didn't want to have another enemy to poison you. The developers ultimately wanted to utilize the blue herb as a way of giving you that damage defense shield. Uh, that time defense shields more so than healing poison so I think that's and they wanted to focus on that mostly and I think that's ultimately why they decided to get rid of uh, the spiders you basically have Birkin following you around the entire game just like the original going through the different stages of the G virus so there's stage 1G stage 2G stage 3G stage 4G the G1 it's Birkin where he's in his stage one of being infected by the G virus. I do want to just say one thing about it really quick. I feel I feel like that was a lot like Pac-Man. How could uh, the G1 boss battle be, you know, be like Pac-Man? Well, the arena is set in a way where it's like kind of like a maze almost, and then in each corner of the maze is there's this, it's like a supply area. So I thought of those as like the the big nodes for in Pac-Man and like you know when you get those you can turn on the ghosts so I thought it was similar to that I'm sure that makes sense now but yeah at first it's like what what do you mean Pac-Man you gotta be kidding me now going into G2 boss battle I thought that boss battle was really good so this fight is very unique this G2 fight after you get through the the part where his hand goes through the roof you can't just kill G2 by pumping in ammo like until he dies. It doesn't work that way. You basically have to get enough damage into him where he goes underneath a specific damage threshold and at that point you're able to uh, kill him by knocking him off with the, the crate on the crane. G3 fight, nothing terribly special about him. Uh, it's, it's, it's more like, I guess, cinematic with the fact that, like, the boss arena is really cool. Uh, I like the boss arena for that one in the lab. This is now. G4 is actually only in Claire's. From Resident Evil 2, the original, G4 is the, is the end boss from Ace Scenario. Essentially, that one's just, you're just on the tram ride down, so that's where they bring back the tram from the original into this version and you you're, you ride down fighting him so he can climb up on the walls on top of the tram and he can even charge you too so he does have like a, a last phase uh, when you get enough dps into his eyeballs essentially he, he kind of just falls on all fours and crawls around that's on a timer so you don't really if you happen to run out of ammo you can actually just let him go but uh yeah g4 uh boss of the game for claire he's he's not in leon's scenario instead what Leon has is uh, Mr. X, Super Tyrant. Come on. So the Super Tyrant from the Beast scenario in Resident Evil 2, he's unpredictable. He's, he, he's like one of the bo few bosses, or one of the like the one boss that I can think of that there really is no like, legit strategy to him, uh, or at least that's how it feels. Other than just uh, getting under a certain amount of threshold, or damage threshold, and waiting a certain amount of time. I, be, I believe it's like a minute and a half, and then a rocket launcher will drop down, just like classic Resident Evil style, and like you know in the original, you end the game with shooting with the rocket launcher. And let's say that you're playing the second scenario, which is unlocked through beating Scenario One, the final final boss fight, which is G5. And G5 is like nightmare fuel. It's the what? It's the guy when you're in the train trying to escape uh, the lab, where he goes into the train and just completely like devours like the train and like there's nowhere to run. The door's locked behind you. Uh, you just have this giant gaping mouth, <coughs> vagina monster coming at you with huge teeth and tentacles, and it's just like it's it's just oh, it's gonna give you fucking nightmares. 